is Mr. Hassan's maths channel. I'm now answering question number nine from the June 2024 Pure Mathematics P2 paper from the Edexcel International A-Level exam board. And we have a question here, which is firstly, um, part 9a. It says, figure one is a sketch of the curve with equation y equals 2 times x to the power of 3 over 2 times 4 minus x, where x is greater than 0. The point P is the stationary point of the curve C. It says, find, the, find using calculus the x-coordinate of P. So we're going to find the x-coordinate of this stationary point. You can see it's a stationary point. What does a stationary point mean? Well, a stationary point is a point of 0 gradient. Okay, so basically we know that at P, at P, the gradient, which is dy dx, is equal to zero. Okay, so we've got to take this expression, or this equation, y equals 2x to the power of 3 over 2 times 4 minus x, and we've got to find dy dx. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare it for, uh, for uh, differentiation. Okay, we're going to prepare it for, for differentiation by expanding the bracket. So you have 2 times 4, which is 8. So it's 8 times x to the power of 3 over 2, and 2 times minus 1, which is minus 2, and you have x to the power of 3 over 2 multiplied by x to the power of 1, basically. So you have to add the powers. So 3 over 2 plus 1 is 3 over 2 plus 2 over 2, which is 5 over 2. 2x two to the power of 5 over 2. Now we have got it ready for us to differentiate. So I'm going to differentiate. So dy dx is equal to... So you have 3 over 2, I'll write the steps out here to make it clear, 3 over 2 times, and multiply by the power, 8x to the power of, you take 1 from the power, so that's 3 over 2 minus 1, which is 3 over 2 minus uh, 2 over 2, which is 1 over 2, and then you got minus, you got 5 over 2 times 2x to the power of, now that's 5 over 2 minus 1, which is 3 over 2, um, here, the 2 cancels with the 8, leaving you with 4, so you end up with dy dx equals 12, x to the power of a half, minus the 2 cancels with the 2, you lot 5, x to the power of 3 over 2. So that is dy dx. Okay, and we want to find when dy dx is equal to 0. So when dy dx is equal to 0, you have 12x to the power of a half, minus 5x to the power of 3 over 2 equals 0. Now, the um, the most kind of like complete way of solving this would be to factorize, to take out the highest common factor, okay, of these two and, you know, solve it by expressing this as a product of two factors and then getting your answer. And when you've got fractional powers, the highest common factor is always the one with the lowest power. Like for example, if you have x to the power of 3 minus x to the power of 5, the highest common factor would be x to the power of 3, right? And then you've got 1 minus x squared, for example. So it's always the one with the lowest power, which is the highest common factor. So in this case here, the lowest power is x to the power of a half. Um, in the numbers, there's nothing common, but from the letters, you've got x to the power of a half, and then you're going to open the bracket. So x to the power of a half times 12 gives you 12x to the power of a half. But how about x to the power of a half times something gives you 5x to the power of 3 over 2? Well, you need the 5. And if you remember, when you multiply two numbers in index form with the same base, you add the powers. So what power do you have to add? Or what do you have to add to a half to give you 3 over 2? Well, you have to add 2 over 2, which is 1. So basically, x to the power of 1. x to the power of 1 times x to the power of a half is x to the power of 3 over 2. So that gives you... 5x to the power of 1. Now, of course, we don't have to write the 1 there. Okay, so now we can see that either x to the power of a half equals 0, or 12 minus 5x equals 0. Now here, this will give us x equals 0, which is not possible. Why? Because x is greater than 0 in our question. If we go back to the uh, question itself, it says here x is greater than or actually equal to 0. Okay. So it, actually, you can have that, but uh, that is possible. However, x equals 0 is a turning point, but we can see that, okay, that's not p. 
That's not P, all right? So X can equal zero, and that, that is another turning point. However, it's not the point P. We can see very clearly P is not where X equals zero. So X, uh, uh, so the, the value of the turning point must be given by this one. So 12 equals 5X. Therefore, X is equal to 12 over 5. So the x coordinate of p is equal to 12 over 5. They only want the x coordinate of p. They don't want the coordinates. They don't want us to find the y coordinate. So there's the answer. So even though x equals 0 is a valid answer for the turning point, it's not the stationary point at p. Okay, so there's the answer to question number 9a. And now for 9b, um, it says the region R1, uh, shown shaded in figure 1, is bounded by c and the x-axis. The region R2, also shown, shoded, sh sorry, sh shown shaded in figure 1, is bounded by C, the x-axis, and the line with the equation x equals k. So this is line x equals k. Given that the area of R1 is equal to the area of R2, find using calculus the exact value of k. So to find the area under a curve, we need to use integration. Okay, so if we take the integral of y with respect to x that will give us an expression that will help us to um, find the area so what i'm going to do first i'm going to take this expression and i'm going to express it in the same way what we did before so it's 8x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 2x to the power of 5 over 2 i'm going to first integrate this with respect to x all right and then i'm going to use that integral to find the area okay so to integrate you have to Add 1 to the power, so that becomes 5 over 2. And divide by the new power, that becomes, divided by 5 over 2, minus 2x to the power of 5 over 2, divided by, when you do you add 1 to the power, it becomes 7 over 2. So that 5 over 2 plus 1 is 5 over 2 plus 2 over 2, which is 7 over 2. Okay. Um, I'm going to put plus c here for now. But we don't need it in the end, because we've got a definite integral. So this gives you, that's basically 2 over 5, times a. If you divide by a fraction, you multiply by its reciprocal, so that's 16 over 5 times x to the power of 5 over 2 minus, so 2 over 2 divided by 7 over 2 is 2 times, uh, 2 times 2 over 7, which is 4 over 7, x to the power of 7 over 2, that should say 7 over 2, although 5 over 2 would be less possible now, to the power of 7 over 2, and then I'll put the plus c here. So now, the area of R1 is going to be, if we take this and we put the limits between 0 and this point here. So wh what is this point here? Well, this is where x equals 4. Because if we think about this, at this point, when y equals 0, that's where it hits the x-axis. You've got 2x to the power of 3 over 2 times 4 minus x equals 0. So either this equals 0 over 2x to the power of 3 over 2 equals 0, or x equals 4. 4 minus x equals 0, x equals 4. So either x equals 0 or x equals 4. That is what we're looking for. This is 0 where it hits the x-axis. This is 4 where it hits the x-axis. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. We know x equals 4 at this point. So if I find the area between 0 and 4, so I'm going to put that into here. So this integrated expression... I don't need the plus C now. That's the area of R1. Okay. Now, the area of R2, so what I'll do here, I'll just write it in a slightly different way so it makes a bit more sense. Because I can see here that I'm going to get something which will something to make life easier. So area of R1 is equal to the area of R2. So it's the same curve, but the limits are this time between 4 and k. Okay, now one thing that you've got to be careful of here is if I use the limits in the normal order, okay, I'm going to get a negative value for this integral because it's underneath the curve from that point. So the area, if I say, if I say, for example, k is bigger, so I'll put k in 4, that's going to give me a negative area. Now, area is a scalar quantity, so I don't want to have a negative area. I know that the, the magnitude of the area of R1 and the magnitude of the area of R2 are exactly the same value. I have 
same area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch these two limits around, which will cause a sign of this to change and now become positive. So instead of having k in 4, I'll put 4 here and k there. And that will help me to uh, avoid that issue. Right? So now what you'll notice is I've got, I've got to put 4 into here and I've got to put 4 into there. Right? So when I put 4 into here, I'm, I'm not going to actually calculate what it is because I can see that I'm going to have the same thing on both sides. So I have 16 over 5 times 4 to the power of 5 over 2 minus 4 over 7 times 4 to the power of 7 over 2 minus, and then when I put 0 in here, it's going to give you 0. And that's equal to, when I put 4 into here, I'll get exactly the same thing. 16 over 5 times 4 to the power of 5 over 2 minus 4 over 7 times 4 to the power of 7 over 2. And then I'm going to put k in here. So I'll have minus, I'll put a bracket here to keep it safe from the minus sign. I'll have 16 over 5 times k to the power of 5 over 2 minus 4 over 7 times k to the power of 7 over 2. Now what you'll notice here is this will cancel with this because if I subtract them from both sides, it's going to give me, it's going to give me 0, right? Exactly the same value, both exactly the same. So here I end up with 0 equals, that minus sign will change the sign of both of these. So I have minus 16 over 5 times k to the power of 5 over 2 plus 4 over 7 times k to the power of 7 over 2. So we've got to find the exact value of k. So now what I can do is I can um, take out the common factor from these two. So I have 0 equals. If I take out the common factor, remember it's the one with the lower power. So it's k to the power of 5 over 2 is a lower power. That gives me minus 16 over 5 plus, and I'm going to have 4 over 7 times. And the power I have to put here is 1 because um, if I put 1 here, 5 over 2 plus 1 is 7 over 2. And when you multiply the two terms, you've got to add the powers. So you have either k to the power of 5 over 2 is equal to 0, in which case k equals 0, or minus 16 over 5 plus 4 over 7 k equals 0, in which case 4 over 7 k equals 16 over 5. Okay, the 4 cancels with the 16, leaving you with 4. So you end up with k equals 4 times 7, which is 28 over 5. Now, of course, k cannot be 0, all right? Um, k can't be 0, of course, because then that would be over here. So k must be, all right? So this k can't be 0, so therefore k is equal to 28 over 5, all right? So that is the answer, because of course, this can't, you know, if it was k equals 0, that would be the y-axis, all right? So that basically is the answer to our question number nine. And that completes this question. I think that was it for question number nine. That's right. So if you would um, like to see other questions from this paper, you can click on the link on the top right of the screen at the end of this video. If you would like to watch other questions dealing with, um, I guess there's two different topics here, isn't it? 9a is to do with differentiation. Maybe I should have put two different videos, it doesn't matter. 9B is to do with integration um, from P2, both of them. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link at the top. Thank you for watching and see you soon.